All right, guys, I admit this podcast could be a total freaking disaster. I have no idea. I have no notes. I just thought I'm going to speak on this topic because damn it, it fires me up today. We're going to talk about what it means to be all in. Are you actually all in or is that just a stupid hashtag you use on Instagram? What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 189 of the Massive Agent Podcast. I am Dustin Brome, your host. So excited today. This is going to be, I believe, a short and sweet episode. I have no idea. This could be a five-minute episode. It could be a 25. I don't know. I have no notes. I have no bullet points, no outline, no nothing, just a topic. I wanted to talk about what it means to be all in as a real estate, real estate agent. What the hell does it mean to be all in? Because I see a lot of people say, I'm all in, and then their calendar and their actions say otherwise. So what the hell does going all in even mean or being all in even mean? Now, obviously, there's no like set definition of what it means to like, you must meet these qualifications to be considered an all in realtor. That's stupid. But I'm going to give you from my perspective, what all in looks like. And I think, you know, when you see somebody who's all in on what they're doing, and if you yourself are all in on something that you're doing, you know it, you, it's one of those things, you know it when you see it. So yes, if you are new to the Massive Agent Podcast, welcome. My name is Dustin Brome. I am your host. Yes. If that wasn't obvious, I am a, a realtor in Salt Lake City, Utah. I am the co-founder of the Industry Syndicate Podcast Network and founder of the Massive Agent Society Business Generation Coaching and Training Program that is relaunching at the end of August 2021, working behind the scenes on building a new website, new program, new pricing, new offerings, new everything. If you thought it was cool before and you were like, oh, that sounds cool, it's going to be three or four times that and better. Okay, so I'm super stoked uh, to unveil that here at the end of August. So stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, my passion here with this podcast, if you've been listening, if, you, if you're if you new to the show, you're just going to have to take my word for it. If you've been listening for a while, you've noticed that I've really changed or I've evolved as a, as a podcast host. This show has evolved as a podcast. It In the beginning, it was all about tactics, tactics, tactics. Okay, how to do this, how to do that, how to, how to start a website, how to do video, how to do YouTube, how to do a podcast, how to do blah, blah, blah. But all that stuff's great. You need tactics, okay? You absolutely do. But even more than that, you need direction, okay? You, all the tactics in the world, they're not going to help you get the growth that you need or that you want or aspire to if you don't really have a destination. If you don't know where you want to go, if you, don't, if you don't know what success looks like, then chances are you're going to hit it, you know? You're going to be successful, but Maybe it's not what you thought it was because you never defined it. Okay, so let me, let me start with this. Somebody who's all in is not just somebody that uses, uses that goddamn hashtag on Instagram and says, I'm all in, I'm all in on this uh, because they're, I see a lot of people say it when they want to be all in, they're excited about something and so they say it, but do their actions map to it? Do their actions show that they are all in? Um, for, for the large majority of my real estate career, I said I was all in. I thought I was all in, but my actions said otherwise because I would only do certain things. I had, I had drawn a line in the sand that I couldn't afford a coach, couldn't, aho- couldn't afford taking this training. I couldn't afford this program. I couldn't afford to hire a videographer or a web designer or someone who really knows how to set up an email drip campaign to do it. So I, my whole career, I did everything myself, everything. I mean, it, honestly, guys, it's one of the reasons why I'm relaunching the Massive Agent Society. If you go there right now, the website, I think, is shit, okay? The website, it, it, it's confusing, and you can tell that a pro did not do it. That, that not a pro is me. I did that website myself. I didn't have anyone else do it. I was at a period in my career where I was still uh, mistaking investment for expense. And I saw someone like hiring a pro that understood website conversion and user, uh, user experience. 
and copywriting, I saw that as an expense that I could avoid if I did it myself. It's not an expense. Spoiler alert. It's an investment. Okay. So I said I was all in majority of my career, but my results said otherwise. That's another thing. You can say you're all in all you want, but do you have the results of somebody, of a realtor who is all in? Because if you are a real estate agent who is all in and you're committed to reaching your goal, let's say your goal is to go from 25 sales this year to 75 this next year, or we're in the year that you're trying to hit your new goal of 75, okay? But you're still doing the same shit that got you 25 deals. You haven't invested in any new programs or lead sources. You haven't learned new skills, not really. You still don't have a freaking transaction coordinator. So you're spending a lot of your time doing paperwork and manually uploading stuff to the MLS and into your CRM and up into Skyslope and marking it up for signatures and sending it. You don't have to do that shit. Okay. Is that the highest and best use for your, of your time? No, it's not. It's not. Be, and the problem is you guys see it as an expense. You see a transaction coordinator as an expense and not an investment that gives you time back to focus on income producing activities. Somebody that's all in understands that, okay? You can be all in and not be fully embracing of it yet because it's a new concept that you haven't really explored and tried yet. That's okay. But I promise you, you've been hearing me say it. You hear Neil Mathweg, who's one of the greatest real estate coaches in our industry not even debatable. He sold over a thousand homes himself. He sold over a hundred homes a year by himself. Like he gets this. He understands the business of a real estate agent, especially a solo agent. And he's always talking about transaction coordinators and how it'll change your life and change your business. Two of our most popular episodes are with Matthew Kane from North Carolina, uh, an absolute rock star on my team. Thank God that I'm lucky to have him. He, his first episode he sold 40 homes his first year. It's pretty, pretty awesome first year, right? Second year, sold over 80. He's on track to do over 100 and something this year. And I asked him in the second episode when he came back to talk about what changed between the first year and the second. No major change. The biggest thing that helped him go from 40 to 80 plus sales, transaction coordinator. Because they took all that bullshit off his plate so he could do more transactions. He could do more transactions. So back to the conversation, are you all in or not? If you are, if you say you're all in, here's, here's, a, here's a little test to give yourself, okay? Are you still doing the things that got you to where you are today? Or have you changed your behavior a little bit and made some investments? If you have, if you didn't use a transaction coordinator, and now because I'm constantly harping on you for getting one, now you finally have, that's, that's a move like that. Put, put a check mark in the all in column. Like that shows me, okay, you're move, you're trending towards all in. That's awesome. Have you learned new skills? Have you learned how to build, um, how to be a leader? Have you learned how to scale an organization and build an organization or, or even take a step back? Are you even thinking of yourself as running an organization or do you still still see yourself as the solo realtor that does it all? Cause if you're doing if you're the solo realtor that does it all, I'm sorry, you'll, you don't have a business. You have a job and maybe it's a very high paying job. Maybe, hopefully, I hope so. A lot of solo agents are very well paid, but they don't have a business. So I realized for the most part, I didn't really have a business. Um, there's, so I'm making steps so that massive agent and my EXP organization and everything else I'm doing is a business. Okay, that I just lead and oversee. So I picked up this book. If you're on YouTube, you can see this, Building an Elite Organization by Don Wenner. My mentor, Clayton Gitz, he built a $150 million a year sales team. that They sell five or 600 homes a year, built it off that operating system. So I'm like, well, shit, if that works for him. And the author, that's one of the top, uh, let's see, the author, Don Wenner, uh, one of the Inc. 5,000 fastest growing US companies for eight consecutive years. Okay. He has a real estate team that did 4 billion in real estate transactions. They're on the real trans wall street journal, um, top 15 real estate pros for seven straight years. That's who wrote this book. So I decided that I need to turn what I've got into a business. So I need to learn from somebody who's done it and has a system that I can copy for myself. So I got the book. 
I got this daily journal, this elite journal you can see on YouTube I'm holding up. Absolutely game-changing, okay? Are you consuming information? Are you learning how to scale, okay? If you do 25 sales a year, is it the same skill set required to sell 75 homes a year? I would argue in some ways, yes. In some ways, yes. But if you're busy at 25, how in the hell are you going to do 75 sales? If you do it the same way, you have to learn some things. You have to put some systems in place and transaction coordinators are a great start. Transaction coordinators are a great start, but hiring somebody to put up your signs, take your signs down, put up your key boxes, all the bullshit, right? You don't need to be doing that. Mowing your grass, something that I talk about a lot. Um, changing your own oil, like just go get the oil changed. Have somebody, there's services now that come to your house and change your oil. Yeah, you pay an extra 20 or 30 bucks, but you get to work that whole time. How much is your time worth? Here's another little, uh, here's another question on this test of whether or not you're all in as a realtor. And if you haven't heard the episode, you have a pass from this. But if you have heard the episode where we talk about how to figure out how much you are worth per hour, how many of you have actually figured that out? Have you taken the time to figure out how much you're worth per hour? Because mine's in the four figures. I figured out how much I'm actually worth per hour. It's four figures. So every time I do something that I could pay someone else $200 to do, like hiring somebody to clean the house, you know, that saves me time, saves my wife time. So she can like hang out with the kids and, you know, live her life and do what she wants to do. Um, let's say it's 200 bucks to hire a house cleaner every other week. If I did that, it would take me longer because I'm not the, I'm not the professional house cleaner. Let's say it took me four hours to do, it takes them two. Um, that four hours, it's like I'm working for 50 bucks an hour. Well, I figured out my, my worth per hour is north of a thousand. So does that make any sense? And maybe yours isn't a thousand. That's fine. Maybe it's, maybe yours is 75 bucks an hour. So then why don't you hire someone that can take some shit off your plate for 50 bucks an hour or 25 or 15 bucks an hour? You get what I'm saying? Did you do the math on that? Yes or no? If you did, cool. Trending towards all in. And here's a big one. Have you written your goals down on paper? Have you written your goals down on paper? Simple yes or no with this one. Here's something I do. I, I've started implementing a program, uh, a routine really called the called Victory Hour. I learned from my, my good friend, my mentor, uh, trainer, John Madsen. He's been on the show before. Um, he does this Victory Hour in the morning and you write down your goals. You read them out loud. You spend five minutes or so uh, visualizing what it will feel like, smell like, taste like, you know, all the senses, what it will feel like to achieve that goal. Okay? So you, you start to imagine yourself in it so that your subconscious starts to, th starts to think it's a memory. See, your subconscious mind doesn't know if it's a memory or not. How cool is that? So you can train your mind to bring you towards something that it thinks is a memory and it wants again when really it's you visualizing. So you see right here on YouTube, I wrote down like every day, I write down three or four different goals that I have. I read them out loud. I've even recorded myself saying them and then I play that recording back so then I can hear it in a different way so that it's implanted deeper. But the elite journal that I use, and there's Panda journal, there's Excel spreadsheets, there's, there's pads of paper, whatever. You need to write down your goals, but the one that I'm using every single morning, I go through what I'm grateful for. So I'll write down gratitude, um, my top goals. So I'll write them again within the journal. And then today's top priorities to reach those goals. Hmm. So I write down to reach those goals. What do I need to do today? What am I stuck on? How can I get unstuck today? So it makes me think about some shit that I need to focus on to get unstuck. And then the tasks and notes for the day. And then I do it again at night, the daily evening journal. So John Madsen calls it a victory lap. So top lessons learned from, from the day. What can you improve on? What could you have done better throughout the day? Um, more, more gratitude. What are you grateful for? What were the wins? If you start and end your day like that, and you know what your goals are, you're intentional about them, you're going to move towards them. And I do not believe that you could have done all that other stuff that I mentioned, and you're trending towards all in, 
but you will never be all in if you don't write down what your goals are and you don't track on a regular basis. I mean, seven days a week. If you don't track what you're going to do to move yourself towards that goal, you can't really consider yourself all in. You can be mostly all in. You could be, you'd be somewhat in, but until you've actually written the stuff down and look at it numerous times a day and think about it numerous times a day and do some visualizing, you can't be all in. But here's what's great about being all in. Once you're all in, shit happens. I don't mean in a negative way, even though negative shit will happen too. That's just, it happens. But you will just unconsciously start moving towards achieving your goals. It's crazy. Since I started writing my goals down, it is amazing how fast I'm able to achieve my goals, how many of them I actually achieve. And there's some that I have right now that are, I, at one point, I would have thought impossible for who I was, that I'm going to hit faster than I ever thought possible. So by the age of 40, I will have hit certain milestones that I once just wish was attainable for my entire life. And I, back then I, I hoped, like I didn't know. It's just crazy stuff, guys. But then it's not. So, so much of being all in is not necessarily learning some tactics on how to do a Facebook ad or how to correctly do tags and keywords and optimize a YouTube video. That's all great. That stuff can help you be successful and reach your goals. Absolutely. But if you're only focused on the tactics and the strategies, you're missing out. Because again, a rudderless boat just, well, I don't know what the analogy is, but if, if your boat doesn't have a rudder, it just goes wherever the wind takes it. It just goes wherever. But if you know exactly where you're going to go, you have GPS, you have it dialed in, you go right to it. Weird. This is not, this is not fancy shit, guys. This is not super advanced stuff. This is stuff we've been hearing our entire lives. But for some reason, and I'm talking to myself, for some reason, we fight it. It sounds kooky. Sounds too easy. Sounds too simple. How can that work? Just writing your goals down? That's not going to do it. It's got to be more complex than that. Well, what if it doesn't have to be so hard? Have you ever considered that? What if reaching the goal or goals that you're striving for in real estate right now as a realtor, what if they don't have to be as hard as you have made them? What if they don't have to take as long as you think that they have to take? What if by just getting out of your own damn way, you can just, it just happens. It just happens. So that's, that's what I'm talking about today. I, I want you guys to really do a deep internal mental dive on this. Are you really all in? Do your actions, if, you, if your mouth got zipped shut and glued shut and you couldn't speak and someone was saying, okay, who's all in? And they, they come up to you and all you have is your, your, your phone, your calendar, your planner, your notebook. That's all you have to show. When they look in it, are they going to see, are they going to see that somebody's all in? Are they going to say you are a realtor who's all in on your goals? Hopefully so. And up until recently, I was not. I, I was trending towards all in. I was making progress. See, that's the thing. When we make progress, we think that we're doing well. But what if we're just, what if by making a little bit of progress, we're killing massive, quick 10x progress? Have you ever considered that? What if, uh, I see this all the time with Facebook ads. Someone's like, well, my ads are doing well. Okay, well, compared to what? D just because you're getting five leads a day, well, what if you made this little change or implemented this thing or whatever, and now you're getting 20 leads a day? But if, if you're satisfied for five leads a day and you're like, oh, they're going well, it's working. It, sure, but could it work better? Can you reach your goals faster? Probably. There's always another level, guys. There's always another level. My hope for you is that you start to be more intentional. You write your goals down and you, you set big goals. Okay? You, you should have some goals that make you laugh. Okay? There should be some goals that you're, you're like, this is ridiculous. Write it down anyways. What the hell's the harm in that? Make some ridiculously big goals. You've heard of BHAGs, right? Big, hairy, audacious goals. I don't know who first said that or coined that, but BHAGs, B-H-A-Gs. What's your B-H-A-G? 
Maybe it's becoming the first billionaire real estate agent. Why not? Right? Home prices are going up. <laughs> uh, why the hell not? And who says the only source of income that you're allowed to receive is through commission, right? There's, see, that's the thing. Our limitations are limitations we've given ourselves or we've let the outside world, we've let society give to us. We've accepted limitations that others have put on us. I've struggled with that my entire life and I still do to a certain extent, but now I'm conscious of them and I'm becoming more conscious of other limitations that I've set for myself or that I've allowed others to set for me. And once you become conscious of it, magic happens. I want nothing more than for you guys to go out and absolutely crush your goal. I want to hear a quarter from now, a year from now, whenever, when you guys really audit where you're at, what you're doing or what you're not doing, I, it, it would absolutely make my entire year to get a DM from you saying, Hey, you know what? I, I wasn't really all in. I implemented these few things. I wrote my goals down. I hired a transaction coordinator. I hired a director of operations. I hired an admin. I stopped doing this. I stopped doing that, whatever. And my business went from this to this. That's why I do this show. I love that. I love that stuff. Getting feedback like that from you guys is incredible. So I want that for you. I appreciate you listening to this episode today. If you've listened this far, I can tell that you want this for yourself, don't you? If you've listened this far, you also want growth. You want growth, but for whatever reason, you're not getting it as quickly as you want or you're not getting it at all. Well, I think you now know what could be behind that. And let me say one more thing, okay? Because this is super important uh, in terms of goals or as I like to call them, future outcomes. Michael Burnoff taught me that. He's, he was on our show a few weeks prior. Great episode about how to, what did I, what did I title that episode? Uh, go back in the library like 10 episodes ago. Michael Burnoff was the guest. Um, future outcomes is what he calls them. But what makes a goal so much more powerful and so much more likely of being attained? But first off, there's all sorts of stats that show if you have a goal, let, let's say it's a 20% likelihood you hit it. You write it down, it goes to a 40% likelihood. You tell a friend about your goal and it goes to 78% chance you hit it. That's crazy. So there's power in that. But then also, you have to set a reward for yourself for once you hit your goal. This is something I've learned recently in some mental reprogramming training that I've been doing, and it's been so powerful. It's it, magic. It's, it's basically freaking magic. Like it, it's, it's shit that I'm like, well, that's kooky and weird, but it works. So I'm going to keep doing it, and it's awesome. So I better tell everybody. If you have a goal, let's say it's to hit 75 sales and you did 25 last year. Well, what's a reward that you're going to give yourself? Okay. First off, put a due date on the goal. Put a due date on it. So by this date, you're going to have 75 sales. So maybe by the end of 2021, you'll have 75 closed transactions, closed sides, if you will. So then when you hit the 75, when you hit the 75 by that date, you will take your spouse to the St. Regis for the weekend. You will take your family to Disneyland. You will buy that four-wheeler. You will whatever. What, and it needs to be, it can't just be like, I'm going to go get ice cream, okay? It needs to be something that you and your unconscious mind want and yearn for and strive for and will, will want to move towards, okay? Because the, the reward, sometimes just the goal itself isn't enough. Sometimes you need something else. It's like, I can't, I've got to hit this goal so that I can then take my family to Disneyland. And that's what your unconscious mind's like, hell yeah, that's what we're going for. But the key is once, no matter what, when you hit the goal and you have to write down the reward too, once you hit the goal, you have to follow through on the reward. Because if you don't, you're training your unconscious mind that first off, you don't make, you don't keep promises to yourself, but that there's no reward in hitting the goals. Hmm. Not really conducive to future goal hitting. Now, is it? But if you do follow through and you do book that Disneyland trip with the family, when you hit that goal at the end of the year and you go on it, your unconscious mind is like, yes, we need more. We want more of this. What's the next goal? What's the ne next reward? Let's freaking go. The goal is key. 
writing it down as key, setting a reward and a due date, and then following through. Absolute magic, guys. Go do this stuff. Let me know how it's going for you. Let me know what your goals are. Send me a DM on Instagram. If you guys are not following me on Instagram, I've been doing a lot more in Instagram and Facebook stories lately. Uh, so if we're friends on Facebook, cool. Follow me on Instagram. Even better, I do. Um, I think it's, I spend most of my time on Instagram now. Facebook's a close second, then LinkedIn. But uh, make sure you go check out at Massive Agent and send me a DM and let me know what your goals are. And if you've never thought about your goals or you never put them on paper, but you will today, take a picture of your goals. If you wrote them down on a notepad, if you have them, um, if you have them on, on your phone, like in the notes, that's awesome. But write it physically with a pen or pencil on paper. Take a picture of it, send it to me in a DM. Freaking awesome. I, I would love nothing more than to have my, my inbox full of those. Thank you guys so much for listening this week. Please, for the love of God, do this stuff, take it to heart. And when you start hitting goals, do it again. Set the next one and do it again. Thanks so much for listening to the Massive Agent Podcast, guys. Take care.